Welcome to this week's View on Africa. My name is Priyal Singh. I am a researcher in the Peace Operations and Peace Building Program at the Institute for Security Studies based in Pretoria. Um, as, part of our, as part of a South African foreign policy uh, project currently being undertaken by POPB, and specifically a work stream that aims to provide ongoing analysis on South African foreign policy uh, and South Africa's current term as an elected member of the UN Security Council. Today I will be speaking on relatively recent developments uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo and how the country's recent elections provide a very early critical test for South Africa to display its commitments as a reinvigorated and uh, to a reinvigorated and principled foreign policy on global peace and security issues. As post-general election uh, developments continue to unfold in the DRC, South African diplomats in New York as well as in Pretoria need to navigate a very complex set of foreign policy considerations that directly impact the country's profile as a committed and capable regional anchor state. Um, specifically, I think this concerns the safeguarding of South Africa's international, perce or international perceptions of South Africa as a very critical stakeholder uh, responsible for the maintenance of regional peace and security. And the significance of this period cannot be underestimated. Research conducted by uh, POPB amongst key UN stakeholders in New York in October last year um, identify that South Africa's current term on the Security Council comes at a time that has arguably witnessed the decline of South Africa's relative international position of power and influence, especially over the last 10 or so years. Um, and additionally, many stakeholders in New York shared a common view with us that um, they view that in spite of this, South Africa is still viewed as a, uh, is still regarded as a natural leader on almost every single African Security Council file. This view was particularly pronounced uh, when the DRC was discussed. Uh, numerous stakeholders specifically pointed to South Africa's long-standing role in supporting stability across the country, as well as its ability to work through regional organizations, such as the AU and, and SEDEC, to positively influence political developments across the country. Um, just a, a brief background to, to South Africa's role. Um, throughout the early 2000s, South Africa played a leading peacemaking and conflict resolution role in the DRC with particular regard to the inter-Congolese dialogue as well as the Sun City Agreement. Up until the present day, South Africa has also has further remained a major troop contributing country to the UN's largest peacekeeping operation uh, internationally, which is centered in the DRC's rest of eastern regions. So South Africa's political capital on the global stage <clears throat> as a credible peace and security stakeholder, became very closely associated with the initiative it displayed in supporting stability in the DRC throughout this particular period. And accordingly, it can be safely assumed that UN stakeholders and the broader international community will pay all the more attention to South Africa in how the country will respond to current security concerns emanating from the DRC. Uh, and I think that these expectations are quite clear as well they should be. In a media statement made last year, late last year, following South Africa's eventual support for the passing of a UN General Assembly resolution condemning human rights violations in Myanmar, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, uh, Minister Lindiwe Sisulu, um, remarked that this was, and I quote, um, a demonstration of a new dawn in South African foreign policy and specifically a return to its founding principles standing against human rights violations. In the same statement, the minister further emphasized that stability in the SEDEC region remains a key priority for South Africa. Uh, so council matters related to ongoing developments in the DRC therefore provide a very critical early test uh, for South Africa to display this, this principled commitment to this so-called new dawn. And uh, the, re the release of provisional presidential election results on the 10th of January, which surprisingly declared opposition leader Felix uh, Chisekedi the winner, um, has led to runner-up candidate Martin Fayulu, uh, who was predicted to be the leading um, opposition candidate by various pre-election polls and, and predicted to win the election, uh, to seek out a recount of the vote. So the country's also very influential Catholic church 
um, also voiced its opinion that the results um, from the country's independ independent national electoral commission did not correspond with its more than 40,000 observers, uh, election monitors and observers on the ground. These, de these developments follow statements from the United Nations, the African Union, as well as SEDEC, that has noted that in spite of these irregularities uh, and challenges associated with the elections, the process as a whole did go relatively well, and that institutionalized responses must be respected uh, should contestations over the results occur. SEDEC has more recently, however, called for stakeholders in the DRC to consider possible negotiated settlements and the formation of a government of national unity in light of these serious objections to the provisional uh, results. And uh, most recently, a SEDEC double troika summit and a further consultative meeting of heads of states of government amongst re concerned regional actors, as well as the, the African Union, uh, took place on the 17th of January in Addis Ababa. Subsequent official communiques and press statements issued by SEDEC, uh, the AU as well as South Africa, have illustrated a significant degree of discord. The AU um, called for a suspension of the announcement of final results and emphasized that um, and emphasized the urgent need to dispatch a high-level um, delegation to the DRC in order to achieve a consensus on a way out of the country's quote post-electoral crisis. SEDEC, on the other hand, did not allude to any such intervention and focused instead on emphasizing the country's generally peaceful elections, the need for international actors to respect the sovereignty, constitution, and, inst and internal institutional processes of the DRC. Um, and following this, South Africa has since con congratulated Felix uh, Chisekedi as president-elect, amongst a few other African countries, and has largely mirrored the official position of SEDEC with no allusion to the AU's uh, proposed diplomatic initiative, intervention, um, and its uh, subsequent calls for, a, uh, for the suspension of a declaration of any final results. So the obvious implications of this for South Africa on the Security Council largely point to the country's ability to ensure some form of consensus amongst African, the other African Council members, as well as broader perceptions of its capability to effectively work through regional organizations and establish a clear and well-coordinated strategy to deal with post-electoral instability in the DRC. Most recently, however, the AU Commission Chairperson, um, uh, Musa Faki Mohammed, has commented that the announcement by the DRC's Constitutional Court confirming the final election results has now led to a postponement of the planned high-level delegation in what appears to be a shift by the continental body towards a position more in line with SEDEC. Importantly, against all of this, leaks of unconfirmed voting data have cast a very bright light over Martin Fayulu's claims of winning the election race, something which he has since called an electoral coup by Chisekedi. Based on these statements, I think that if we read a bit more between the lines, a significant degree of incongruity between and amongst continental peace and security stakeholders <clears throat> is very clearly evident. Similarly, Security Council dynamics within and amongst the permanent and elected members have so far indicated considerable friction. In the first post-election meeting called for by France on the 4th of January, the Council remained divided over the issuance of an initial press statement which would have allegedly criticized the Congolese government for obstructing access to the internet and certain media outlets, um, while also highlighting the need for election results to be released without any further delay. In one of its first such council sittings, South Africa fails to ensure a clear African consensus on the matter, with Cote d'Ivoire being in favor of the press statement, along with the United States, the United Kingdom, Belgium, uh, and, and France. South Africa, however, argued in favor of the Council reserving all action and judgment following the announcement by the CENI of the election results. In a second Council meeting on the 11th of January, South Africa welcomed the election results um, while also commending the work of the, the CENI. It pointed attention to the role of external factors that have interfered and undermined the historical development of the DRC, while also further emphasizing the need for the Council to mobilize the UN's Peacebuilding Commission and provide the necessary post-electoral support that the country may need. So between growing concerns over the legitimacy of the election results 
seemingly contradictory positions put forward by SEDEC and the AU, and the looming possibility of a violent rejection of the final results, the Council may come to be sharply divided over a collective response to the DRC election outcome. And, and of course, this will be further compounded and complicated for the foreseeable future by concerns surrounding the country's volatile eastern regions and the future of the UN's own um, peacekeeping efforts in the country. So how South Africa approaches the DRC will therefore provide a very firm basis to international actors engaging the country's commitment to what has been referred to as this new dawn in, in our foreign policy. To achieve this, South African diplomats in New York need to definitively set the agenda on the DRC um, at the Security Council. While South Africa will gain regional credibility and legitimacy by mirror mirroring the positions and views adopted by SEDEC and the AU, much, much more will be expected by South Africa to act expeditiously and preempt council files relating to the continent. And this will be all the more important in light of the very fast-paced nature of the council that leaves very little time for South Africa to adequately deliberate back and forth with, with Pretoria, let alone uh, Gaborone and Addis Ababa. South Africa further needs, to ensure, uh, further needs to ensure that it consistently advances a very clearly articulated and principled approach on the Council toward the DRC that aims to drive a robust consensus with the other two African Council members, namely Equatorial Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire. Presenting a united African front on, on files such as the DRC would go a long way in legitimizing the positions adopted by South Africa on the Council as a committed regional and continental peace and security stakeholder um, and, and as an actor that acts beyond its immediate uh, national interest but takes in, uh, into account the concerns and interests of the region and the continent as a whole. Importantly, South Africa also needs to remain abreast of the constant and oftentimes misguided analyses of its behavior being understood through a very binary lens that pits countries such as Russia and China against the United States and other European uh, uh, council members as well. So given the current state of global multilateralism and the polarization that we've witnessed over the last few years, international stakeholders will be increasingly inclined towards placing South Africa in one particular camp. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think South African diplomats need to guard against these kinds of lazy analyses by really prioritizing public diplomacy and responding to council developments in a very timely manner. Something um, which I think that our Department of International Relations and Cooperation, as well as our mission in New York, have been doing a very good job of uh, so far, especially since the 1st of January when they joined the council. So these considerations will certainly be tested in the coming months, especially as developments in the DRC will come to increasingly feature on the Council's agenda. Whether South Africa will be able to definitively set the agenda um, and, and provide the kind of leadership needed to bolster its credibility as a committed global peace and security stakeholder remains to be seen. What is much more certain, however, is that the DRC will provide a very clear opportunity for South Africa to, to set the tone of its current term on the Council over the, for the next two years. Um, the Peace Operations and Peace Building Program at the Institute for Security Studies, as part of our work focusing on South African foreign policy, uh, will continue to monitor South Africa on the Council throughout the 2019-2020 period, and we aim to provide ongoing analyses and briefings uh, on key developments on a monthly basis. Thank you very much for watching.